Hi everybody and welcome to my channel, my name is Mariana and you're watching Lucifer's Library. In today's video, we are doing my June TBR. Mm -hmm. mostly going to be dessert-a-thon and I am the team leader for spicy shortcakes. I'm so freaking excited. Our genre is steamy and spicy books. So you can read anything from sci-fi to plague books as long as they have steam scenes you can be a part of my team. Yeah I am putting in extra effort as a team captain to basically read books within the genre so if you don't know you don't have to follow your team's genre but i really want to be a good influence i guess and you get extra points if you read within your team's genre so all of the books that i'm going to talk about i think have some spicy steamy smutty scenes that will get me extra points so for spicy shortcakes we have five ingredients flour eggs sugar whipped cream and strawberries flour is your favorite genre and for that one i'm gonna be reading either baby daddy or dear ava on kindle um so one of these two books is gonna be baby daddy i think has a pregnancy trope as well this is a romance book so yeah, it's one of my favorite genres, Kindle romances, but also with my favorite trope. Then we have eggs, and for eggs, it's part of a series. And for this one, I'm gonna be doing Barbarian Mind, which is the fourth book in the Icepan Barbarian series. When I read the first three books, I did read approximately one book a month. Um, so I'm just continuing that steady pace, reading one book a month for this series. But Barbarian Mind, oh my goodness, it is steamy, it is spicy, it is fantastic so it is also sci-fi so i'm switching it up a little bit instead of having like a contemporary romance it's gonna be a sci-fi but the focus is on smut next up we have sugar and for sugar it is a feel-good book um for this one i'm going to be reading dating dr dill and i don't know why i just like smutty books with doctors and I really want to go back into that again because in 2020 I had a phase where I just read <laughs> a lot of smutty books about doctors. It's so embarrassing but they are my comfort reads. Like I imagine Ray's Anatomy but in book form. When my grandpa had a stroke in June of 2020, um, he had a stroke on June 8th and within that two days I read like three smutty doctor books <laughs> because I was just it was you know I was in shock because I had to call the ambulance I was there I saw him everything it was just very hard and it stuck with me like all of that if that image in my head stuck with me for a while and so I used <laughs> smutty doctor books to cope with that it was my coping mechanism so that is why dating dr dill is on this list is a feel-good book because I'm going back to it um, they were my saving race even like after my grandpa passed away in on June 22nd um, and I'm laughing because I'm so uncomfortable telling that story it's so weird but you know what whatever helps you cope I guess I'm not gonna judge next we have whipped cream outside your usual genre Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, so for this one, it was really hard finding something that I am going to finish because if I pick up a thriller, first of all, do we have smutty thrillers? Second of all, I know that if I pick up a thriller, I won't finish it. I'm just not that in that type of mood. I'm not that kind of person. I don't like thrillers. I don't like mysteries. I don't like my books to stress me out. So I went with a book that I or a genre that I don't reach too often historical romance i don't read as much historical romance as i would normally however here is also a little note for this genre of historical romance like this type you have several types you have outlander a discovery of witches which isn't really it's more like paranormal historical baba for this one I am choosing like traditional historical romance like naked dudes on the cover or you know a woman in her dress and stuff and I'm choosing a Tessa Dare book. I don't know traditional like classic um, most hyped historical romance authors 
but I do know about Tessa there so I am my my hands are doing overtime today <laughs> so I am going to be trying a Tessa there book I think I'm going to be starting ro romancing 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 the Duke and the last book or the last prompt we have is strawberries published in the last 12 months so basically a recent release new release I guess um, and for that one I am going to be choosing Ali Hazelwood's under one roof. I'm going to be reading the first book in the Steminist series uh, because I love the love hypothesis and I want to start reading more books from this author to see if it was just a one-hit wonder or if this author is actually my favorite. For the last book that I'm going to be reading is actually finally one book from my bookshelf. It is Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas. I am going to be buddy reading this with Naomi from Through My Library and we were supposed to buddy read it for J May, like the second, we read one book a month and we read Crown of Midnight in May, we're supposed to, I didn't. I don't want to read Crown of Midnight, I don't like it, <laughs> so I'm gonna skip it and I'm gonna go straight into Air of Fire which I'm so looking forward to. If I hadn't read this series before, I would just DNF in Crown of Midnight and I would never pick up Air of Fire and that would be an absolute tragedy. Also today I have this like feeling I just want to read fate books. I, I, I'm in the mood to read, um, to reread A Court of Thorns and Roses and The Cruel Prince for some reason but oh my goodness okay I'm reading this in... Hi Mango! I'm re sorry I'm reading this in June with hopefully Naomi if she still is up for it but if not I'm still gonna read it anyway come um I forgot to mention this is Mango hi Mango he's been keeping me company today he's been on the on my desk and he's back from his winter vacation he used to be um in my grandma and uncle's house which is right next door because it's warm in there and, and plus he can roam around all he wants um during winter but now he's back with me because we moved kitchens so we're not in the upper kitchen anymore but we're in the kitchen downstairs because it's colder during the summer there and the kitchen upstairs is like really gets really warm and then in winter we switch we go to the upper kitchen so yeah anyway he's gonna be with me just giving me company isn't that right he's a good boy mango is a good boy anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video and i hope you have a lovely lovely day i hope that um yeah good luck on your june tbrs and let me know if you are joining the desertathon what team you are and and send me your tbr videos or you know pictures tag me in pictures i want to see pictures i've been loving all the spreads people have been doing and sending on discord by the way i'm gonna link everything down below also my video my announcement video if you want to check everything out but yeah we're gonna go have a lovely lovely day and we'll see you next time bye say bye bingo say bye bye I speak to him in English and in Slovenian. We love a bilingual queen. Also, he's a king. His full name is King Mango Henry VIII. Yeah, um, my outfit today, inspired by Six the Musical. <laughs> Purple, my favorite queen. And Mango is also inspired by... Mango's name is also inspired by Six the Musical. Isn't that right? Mango King Henry VIII. I have a thing about naming my chickens. <laughs> my, <laughs> my, my parrot, my animals, all my animals long names. Lucifer's name is Lucifer Ariana Nessie Morningstar. Kara's name is Kara Litharwan de Levine. Mango's name is King Mango Henry VIII. I had a hamster called um, Frenchie Riss Sparrow. Jack Sparrow's dedication. Um, I had a parrot, Sir Skittles William II, and then I had a parrot, William Jace Herondale. <laughs> I had a, I had two fish, goldfish, Jesse and Arden. Oh my goodness, I love them. I miss them so much. Um, yeah, we love long names. Isn't that right, King Mango Henry VIII? <laughs> okay, we're gonna go. Have a lovely, lovely day. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.